Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. And of course, you got here just in time. That's right, just in time for another training video. No, 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 it's not gonna, it's not gonna be that kind of training video. We're actually in Palestine, Texas, which is a, a railroad hub. I mean, we're right here, pretty much, downtown is just right there, and they have got a huge switching yard right here. This morning I was sitting at the computer planning, we've got an epic journey coming up. Uh, you know, and I started looking for things to show you. And I was identifying all kinds of train stuff and just stuff to go see. Uh, you know, I, I need to look for these things a little closer to home. And so I just started, I actually started tagging railroad stuff in the state of Texas. And Palestine popped up on one of the search terms. And it has brought me to Palestine today. So the I and GN Railroad in Palestine was established 1846. The town was 9,000 residents. So the originally trade was facilitated by the Trinity River. Steamboats coming up. The railroad local leaders. Okay, so they brought in the railroad. In 1872, the shops and roundhouses were all moved here. In 1900, the railroad was the biggest employer in Palestine. Wow, that's pretty amazing. There's all, all kinds of train stuff to see here. And actually, the Texas State Railroad also is located in Palestine. But that's not going to be in this video because that's another video for another day. Yeah. So, th but today I've, I've identified a couple of things that we're going to check out, but I've never been in the visitor center here in Palestine. So I'm going to jump in here real quick before we get any further into this training video. Hey, do me a big favor. Click that howdy button. Say howdy down there. Tell me, where's your favorite train layout? Where's your favorite model train? What's the best one you've ever seen? Now, the reason I should have clarified why I'm, I'm, we're not doing the Texas State Railway in this video, and you're also probably wondering, how, do, how is this connected to RVs? Well, I, ha I have a map, Google map of public campgrounds. Most of that, of most of the state of Texas uh, is in there and other places. But I recently found out that there's actually a public campground at the Texas State Railroad Depot in Palestine. At some point here in the, the very near future, I'll be taking Trudy Thunder over there and we'll be, we'll be doing a full-blown camp video. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't want to spoil that in the meantime. So now you know there's an RV campground, a public RV campground right there in Palestine. I have yet to do it, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the map. There's also a great public campground not too far down the road called Ratcliffe Lake. You'll really like that. As well as Mission Tejas State Park. So there's some public campgrounds not too far away. So if you're at Mission Tejas or Ratcliffe Lake, and you want to go check out something, you want something to do, this is a great place to go, Palestine, Texas. All right, let me get back to, let's get back to training. We'll go take a walk through here, get a little more education, and then we'll go do some training stuff. We just had to come across the street, so the visitor center's there, the train yard's there. Apparently there's no, so far that I've been able to find, there's no elevated platform. But there's a sculpture garden I thought was pretty neat. We got the locomotive coming out of that side. A little train station there. Palestine station. But what caught my attention was this one over here. That's a whole lot of wheels. <laughs> Uh. 
need to go see some train stuff. Look at that big railroad spike. All right, let's go see some train stuff. The Palestine Railroad Heritage Center. This is presented by the Texas State Railroad Society. It's very nondescript. You got the red awning across the road, and then you have the Union Pacific caboose. So let's let's go inside and let's go see some train stuff. So we're gonna come in here, make sure we sign in. <laughs> with us all right this this is gonna blow you away but we're gonna we're gonna you're not gonna get to see it until we introduce you to the the guy who created this this is not it this is just a holiday display it's pretty cool though it's really cool you see that running from outside we're going, you're, you're, you're going, your mind is going to get blown. So this is Paul Arthur Dumas. And he was from the Dallas area. And he was passionate about his model railroad. 30, 35 years constructing it. Uh, they've had a number, the, the facility here has had a number of collections donated to them just lots of fascinating information about all of it uh, and it, it is still a work in progress a collection of cast locomotives and then there's some G gauge some dioramas a locomotive Locomotives built by prison inmate from matchsticks. Somebody spent a lot of time just working with wood. I actually have one of those in G gauge. Not doing anything with it. We're, going, we're coming to that. You don't get to see over there just yet. Union Pacific trains. Now, there's plans to expand this. Those are cool. You hear the, that's the, the Texas State Railroad. Engage. Three D printed Palestine station, and then a three D print of the Rusk station. It's very cool. The track layout. Okay. Oh, oh, that's cool. I need one of those. I actually haven't looked at any of this. It's very, very similar. Palestine and Cleburne have a lot in common in that they were they were hubs for different 
rail lines. Hmm. Locomotives of the I and G N Railroad. That's neat. Super power locomotion. Texas type. Okay. Now. Now we are going to start. The man spent 30 plus years in in a in a garage extension working on this, and it was donated after his passing. He was definitely into his model railroad. A lot of what you see in here was inspired by the DFW Dallas area. So if you look at that, you can see that's, that's Goat Hill with Baby Doe's and the waterfall sign. And then you've got the, some of the buildings from downtown. station So when the layout was constructed, it was in a room. So the far edge back there would have been the wall. And this would be at the front with just a space for viewing. And it did have, it is a, a dead end on the island, I mean the path. And it's closed off because of uh, the, the family when they donated it. They were they were very concerned that, or they were concerned about small hands because there, there's so much detail in here. So the public's not allowed to go into the middle. That's what I'm trying to say. Must be close to the Trinity, the big alligator. Looks kind of like deep elm.
the cathedral is amazing. Here's what I was told. So that is how the cathedral was built. That's what he started off with. You see yeah. he, each page, different components that he had to cut. And there were... Um, that is amazing. So he would, he would um, range from something as complex as that. To using a toothpaste box to, to create um, an, an, an paper. Can you believe that? Big switching yard. Oh. So we're now on the back wall. So this was not visible when he was putting it together. He must have liked Tabasco sauce. You can kind of see what he was using to construct his buildings. Like toothpaste box.
Let's see if we can get some trains moving towards and away. Wow, my clothes out wasn't very good, so we're gonna do it right here. It, it, is it not incredible what that man did? He, he, he spent a lot of time and a lot of thought and a lot of energy in, in putting that together. Um, unfortunately for the curators that are having to manage it now, there's not any diagram, there's no wiring diagram. Uh, and when they when they broke it into sections to move it, they had to cut a lot of wires. And so they've they've got the basic operations going. But he said there's there's miles of wires under those tables that have yet to be reconnected because there's just so many. He, he had the diagram in his head, <laughs> so so they're having having to rework it and they would appreciate your support. They actually have a new Facebook page. They're a relatively new museum. They've only been in operation for a couple of years. Uh, it would be awesome if y'all could jump over to their Facebook page. I'll, I'll provide a link in the description down there to their Facebook page. And I will also share this video on Facebook and if I can, I'll share it to their page. And it would be awesome if y'all could jump over to their Facebook page and give them a like, show them some love, give them all the digital support that you can give them. Man was a font of knowledge. He, he's, he gave me a, so much information about the, the local, uh, uh, about train layouts and where I can go to see and, and where they are. And he pointed out a, a bunch of train museums that don't show up on any map. So I got all kinds of content to work with in this genre. It's lots of training content coming your way. I really learned a lot uh, uh, about my, my, my craft here. So I, I have no photography training, no videography training. It's all uh, hands-on, figuring it out as, as I do it. And I realized that I could have done better on both of these, these train videos that I've created so far. Uh, I actually have some of the, some, some equipment that will make this, would have been better to use. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I make is the the rattling of my my selfie stick. I've edited out a lot of that, but you can still hear it in the background. Uh, I have I have different tools that I will be employing for this type of video in the future. 
So don't be discouraged and say, oh man, that dude doesn't know how to operate. Doesn't know what he's doing. Well, I don't, and I'm figuring it out. Thank you for sticking with me to this point. If you're still here now at this point, thank you, I appreciate that. If you like this training content, please tell me down there what I could do better. Give me some feedback. I, I'm a big boy. I, I can I can take criticism. Uh, I like constructive constructive criticism, not just whining and complaining criticism. I know I got an accent. You don't you don't have to tell me that I talk like I talk. <laughs> Anyway, if you've not already, I'd be most honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button down there. If you didn't like this video, hit the thumbs down twice. Yeah, hit me twice with that thumbs down. If you did like the, the content, hit the howdy button. And if you've not already, I'd be most honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button. That really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you. I would not have the pleasure and honor of doing what I do if it was not for you. So thank you. I know your time is valuable. Thank you for spending some with me. And for my patrons, your generosity is most appreciated. I am grateful. Thank you so much. You guys rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear? Oh, next week, I think I got a good one coming.